So hello there. Uh, this is San and Yubiging, and uh, I'm a monk, a meditation teacher, and a best-selling author. Um, and I wanted to uh, come on tonight to talk about purpose, magic, <laughs> and the island of Patmos, and the island of Patmos. So I'm calling in today uh, from uh, Greece. Uh, and an island called Patmos in Greece. It's a very sacred island. Uh, it's a very special island to me. And uh, I, about nine or ten years ago, did my meditation teacher training here. I did, uh, well, my first part of it, I spent uh, ten weeks here on the island of Patmos in Greece uh, meditating. Uh, and uh, this is actually where I took my vows and became an Ashaya monk as well. Uh, so it's a very uh, precious and special place for me. Um, would you like to see the, the view, anybody who's watching? <laughs> um, because it's the most ridiculously uh, beautiful, beautiful place. Um, in fact, before I go further to talk about uh, the message for today, I think I might just give you a little view of the place. Uh, so can I switch this around? I think I can. Can you see where, that where I'm, I'm looking at right now? Uh, so this is uh, from the back of my uh, place I'm staying. Can you see that? Give me a like or something across the screen so I know it's working. Um, so this is uh, our pool and uh, that's the Aegean Sea down there. Well, the sun's bit strong. Beautiful place. So I'm on the island of Patmos and like I say I'm in uh, Greece uh, for the next couple of weeks. I spend uh, two weeks here every year uh, with uh, my monk friends, <laughs> uh, 80 other uh, meditation teachers. We come and spend a week with our spiritual teacher and uh, the first week we um, ascend together and, and learn and explore and share and then the uh, second week is just a chance to, for us to connect and explore the island and have a bit of a holiday. So, how have I ended up here? Uh, I said at the beginning of this video that it's been 10 years, uh, I think around 9 or 10 years since I first uh, visited the island of Patmos. Um, and I came here because 18 months prior to my first visit here, I was having a really difficult time. And uh, my, uh, I experienced my own personal rock bottom. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever had a rock bottom in your life, but mine showed up. Uh, with first, I had a few warning signs along the way. You know, I wasn't feeling happy. I was feeling stressed. I was feeling tired. I was feeling old. Um, I was having arguments with my partner, and I was not. I was not feeling like a. a, a I was feeling like a fraud in my, um, in my day job, and there was loads of stuff going on. But I was just like, ah, oh, just ignore that, ignore that. Um, and then eventually, uh, everything came to a head, and I uh, found myself uh, losing the partner. Uh, that I was with the girl, my girlfriend left. Uh, along with her, she took a child they'd been raising together because she wasn't biologically mine, so I lost her at the same time. So, kind of two people I loved uh, disappeared overnight. Um, there was too many memories in the house that I was staying in with them, uh, so I moved out of the fancy place as well, and uh, that we've been staying in uh, in Edinburgh. Uh, the, the fancy Range Rover car went, you know. Um, we just signed a £75,000 book deal together and, and uh, that went with the relationship. Uh, and, and a whole host of things happened. So basically, prior to that, I was, uh, first of all, consultant. So what was your day job at, that, at the time, Paul says? The day job at the time was uh, I was running detox retreats. Um, I had a company called Life Detox and I had uh, running detox retreats. And I felt like a complete fraud because, you know, by that point, I'd been on TV in 30 countries. I... Uh, d demonstrating uh, the work that I did, and uh, I had um, had had a book out or a few books out already, um, but I felt like a failure and a fraud because I wasn't um, feeling successful, and I was being asked by all these magazines and newspapers and radio shows and stuff to tell people how to be happy, and I wasn't experiencing much joy myself, and it was a real uncomfortable time in my life, and 
you know, I'd been going to all these workshops and learning all these techniques, but what I observed was that when I was there listening, I was always thinking, oh, that's going to be great for my client on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that's going to be great for t t teaching someone to a workshop. And I actually hadn't uh, really applied it to myself. And it was a very uncomfortable mirror to look at when I realized that was the case. And so it was around about that time that I'd already, I'd already learned to uh, meditate at that point, but like I said, I wasn't using it for myself, and so I actually hadn't been practicing it. But because my life was in such a, a difficult place, and I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't eat, and I was just in such a, you know, I was suffering, basically, um, I'd learned to meditate uh, with the Shais of the Bright Path. Uh, it's called Ascension Meditation, but it's, there's lots of things called Ascension Meditation, so I'm just being clear, it's the Shais of the Bright Path. Um, and these monks that taught me, you know, I, you can do it for free forever. Once you've done the course once, you can repeat for free forever. So I went along uh, to repeat because I was just needing some help and there happened to be a course happening near me. And it was that weekend when one of the monks with another smiley face, <laughs> smiley look in his face, uh, said that permanent peace was possible. And although my mind wanted to say piss off, permanent peace isn't possible, don't lie to me. Uh, something in my heart s said, what if it's true? You know, what if it's possible? Uh, what if this monk isn't lying? You know? And uh, they said, you've got to meditate two or three times every day for about 15, 20 minutes. And if you do that, your life will change. And I was like, well, I've got nothing to lose. And so I thought I'd do it. Um, and after a very short period of time, I started experiencing a very unexpected amount of peace. Um, things that had been bothering me and stressing me out weren't so stressful and, and stressing me out as much. And life had started to flow again. Um, I was getting my groove back, you know. <laughs> I was getting my creativity back. I was getting excited about life again. And so first things first, if you have, if you are experiencing one of these rock bottom wake up calls, have faith, trust that this is a cosmic redirection for you and it's inviting you to get clear on what you want and have the motivation to step towards it. Okay, uh, so don't get up too soon. Uh, life hasn't given up on you. It's actually trying to wake you up, inviting you to step up and inviting you to uh, move in some different direction. And, and some of us uh, just get an intuitive hit and go there. And some of us need uh, our back against the wall and the wall on fire in order for us to step towards our peace. Personally, I was the latter. I need to have my back against the wall and the wall on fire. Um, but I'm glad that I hit that rock bottom wave call. And so um, I went on a, 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 like a five day retreat uh, with the Ascension Meditation uh, back in 2007 or 8 um, and then um, that motivated me to uh, come to Patmos and at that point these guys were uh, teaching a 10 week course um, they now do that in Spain uh, but uh, back then it was a, there was a 10 week meditation retreat happening uh, on the island of Patmos and so I thought well that's not too scary I'll go along to that and uh, if you're just joining me I just want to share the view of where I am. Uh, this is the view from my patio. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't that beautiful? We live in such a beautiful world, guys. Don't forget it. And if you don't get to see it often, then do whatever you can to, to make sure you do get out of the big smoke, the big cities, and, and come to where it's much more obvious that we live in Nirvana. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, when I was here, though, I didn't have the, the fancy... Uh, pool and stuff, we uh, ate to a room or whatever, and eating one, once a day and stuff like that, you know, proper uh, meditation retreat. But I'm now a teacher, so I get to uh, experience uh, uh, this after, uh, now that I've burnt up a lot of the stuff that I need to let go of. I'm not saying I burnt up everything, but I'm just saying that it served to be in the bunks, uh, and now it's really lovely to be able to be up here talking to you now. So, um, first of all, as I'm going through this, if you have any questions about the Ashayas or the Bright Path or the techniques or anything, um, do let me know. Um, I'm here to, I'm transparent, I'm here to answer any questions you have, okay? But I promise to talk about purpose, uh, magic, and the island of Patmos. And obviously I'm on the island of Patmos, so that can, we're kind of semi-covering that, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, but I want to talk to you about purpose initially. Um, when we were in the meeting last night, uh, Maharishi, my uh, first teacher, uh, posed the question you know, to everyone in the room, you know, as, as children, do you, do you still remember as a child that you felt you'd come here to do something important? And I'd like to pose that question to you. You know, as a, as a children, do you still remember from when you were a child having 
this sense that you were here to do something important. Um, it's a question to consider. Uh, because more often than not, people have this sense that they do. They've, they've come here for, to do something. They've come here to uh, achieve, achieve something. To It's not just a pointless life, but they're actually here uh, for some kind of purpose. And, and as children, because we aren't limit, limiting things, we often uh, experience it as a, as a grand purpose, as a big purpose. We're here to do something. Um, I'm really curious if anyone has, has ever had that. If you give me a yes or uh, a like on, on the Facebook Live or whatever. But I'm really curious if that's your experience because when we went around the room last night, you know, maybe it's a biased audience because, you know, uh, we're all meditation teachers, uh, but like almost the entire room put their hand up going, yeah, I felt like I've had, I've, I've, I've been here to do something important. Um, and Sally said, uh, I've, I too have had that thought and she's had it in the last year. That's really cool, Sally. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and great Kate May that wants to learn Ascension sometime this year. We'll make sure that there's a course on uh, in the UK. And so, what I want you to know is that you are here for a, a very important purpose. And the more you uh, are willing to have life move you uh, in directions you might not think you want to go, uh, the more quickly you can actually achieve that. But one of the first steps to do that is to actually, before you start trying to move anywhere new, is to actually, first of all, get still. Um, we are very much caught up in the movement of our minds if we haven't got some sort of regular meditation practice. Um, if it's not if it's not a chaotic mind, uh, we're still being often governed by the, the thoughts in our head, uh, the voice in our head that sounds like us. That can be very limiting if we are going to rely on the voice in our head to tell us how we're getting on and what we should do with our life. Because the voice in our head is limited to what it's learned. It's limited to what it's observed in, in its lifetime and it's limited to what it's observed and, and learned along the way. Um, this is no original thought and it's, it's very true. The chances are your purpose is something potentially that you haven't even heard of or know about yet. Uh, and so it's really important not to necessarily rely on solely the voice in your head to tell you uh, A, what you're capable of, but B, what you're here to do. Um, what I've found is that the more still I become on the inside, the more I can't help but align with, with the present moment because they're, 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 in, they're intertwined. Uh, when you become fully present, you experience that present moment through the eye of awareness and that awareness is, is fully still. And so as you become more still uh, through becoming more present in your life, you align with the present moment and you, 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 there's no longer a part of you fighting life. There's no longer a part of you that's trying to control life. There's no longer a part of you that's um, scared of life. And you're actually much more willing to experience life in all its weird and wonderful wacky ways and you're actually willing to actually see what life is trying to present to us. We're often so caught up in our own minds, we're missing the life that's being presented. And in doing that, um, we can accidentally not fulfill our purpose uh, for being born. Another important purpose for being born, because we're on the topic of purpose, is to, is to, is to wake up and know who you really are. And again, I come back to this voice in your head, because that voice in your head is not who you are. Um, you are the permanent, unchanging, underlying presence that exists within you and that is not separate from any, in anything or anyone else. You are uh, unbounded and eternal and always peaceful. It might not feel that way, you might not believe that, but that's because you're feeling your thinking and you're in your mind and you uh, believe you are in the voice in your head and you believe you are maybe the, the feelings that you're feeling. But when you come back to who you really are, when you come back to the present moment presence that is observing this moment occurring, then you discover that this awareness that's observing it and the, and, and, and the, the, the oneness with the, the life it's observing is who you really are. Um, and you're here to um, ultimately observe creation happening. Now that might sound, uh, well, I don't know what it sounds like to you, but it's actually I'm an incredible job title that we get. You know, a lot of us humans, people, we think we're here to manage control and set some goals and try and achieve them in this lifetime and then, you know, have the white picket fence or more money or whatever. But the reality is that life is happening. Creation is already creating. And you don't actually have to interfere with it as much as you think you may do. 
since I've got out of the way and allowed creation to do its thing and recognise that my job is just to be the eye of the observer, my job is just to observe uh, life as it is happening, since I've got more out of the way, then I, my life has become incredibly magical. Uh, it's become incredibly uh, adventurous. Uh, it's become very enlivened. And, and that's because I'm aligned with life itself. I'm not just a, a, aligned with my mind thinking about life. Do you see the difference, guys? Does this make any sense? And so we're looking to recognize the purpose of life is to align, uh, so is to wake up to the awareness within, because uh, that awareness is aware of the present moment, and the present moment is the only moment that exists, and it's the only moment that life is happening. And we, if we want to live, we need to be where life is happening. And that's right here, right now. But again, most of us are caught up in our thoughts, thinking about times, spaces, and all that that aren't even present right now. Happened last week, happened earlier today, happened when we were five, or might happen later. But there's very little attention or focus giving to the only moment that actually exists, which is right here and right now. And the more you wake up to the present moment, the more you discover that it's not filled with the problems that you thought it was. But actually, the present moment is, is the most magical thing on Earth. That life is being created in front of you all the time. It's like this conveyor belt of magic just coming towards you 24-7. And without a mind that's going to judge it as bad and wrong or worse or negative, it's actually all pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's like fascinating. It's an amazing gift to have life. And we get to observe life happening in all its awe and glory. And if this sounds too far or, or far-fetched or uh, not possible or whatever, just remember that that's only the voice in your head that's saying that. But when we let go of that voice in our head, we come back to the reality. And the reality is ridiculously amazing. And so today I want to talk about uh, purpose in magic in the island of Patmos. And I want you to, you know, just settle in and check out within yourself, you know, first of all, the question is, you know, as a child, did I feel like I was here to do something important? And, and the second question is, you know, do you believe in magic? Do you want, do you, do you want uh, a magical life? Um, or has it over the time and over the years and over the, all picking up all the beliefs and the concepts and the ideas and the thinking and the past and the future, has that magical moment become more a bit dulled? You know, I often sometimes hear people saying, well, I don't want to be present because the present moment's not, the present moment's horrible. Um, that's often what I hear from people when, when I say, you want to be present in your life. And they go, well, and they go, no, I don't want to be present. I'm trying to escape the present moment and by going into my mind. I'm like, no, no, we got it back to front. By being in your mind, judging the hell out of it, you're making your life a hell. But when you let go of these judgments, when you come back to the direct uh, alignment and direct experience of the present moment, your life stops being a uh, hell and it starts being absolutely uh, amazing. In respect to what's happening in the external, you start to live it without fear, um, with an absolute unbounded focus, one point of focus on the present moment. Does anyone have any questions absorbing this? Um, are you, are you enjoying it? Uh, while you consider if you have anything you want to ask, I'm just going to give you another wee sneak look at the uh, sitting at. Uh, that's my patio for the next couple of weeks in Patmos. The island we go out and swim around sometimes. That's the Aegean Sea if you're wondering. And over uh, in that direction you head into town. It's quite an amazing place, eh? So any questions from anyone watching? Um, purpose, magic, and the island of Patmos. Uh, so, like I said, I first came here about 10 years ago, uh, and I've um, been coming here almost every year ever since. Um, we spend a couple of weeks with my meditation teacher uh, and um, 80 other meditation teachers. And this week we're um, ascending, also known as meditating, uh, a lot during the days, and then we're having meetings twice a day with my teacher and we have been it's been the most amazing amazing things and and one of the things I'm allowed to share with you because obviously there's some more advanced stuff that might not make sense um, just on a Facebook live like this but one of the things I've been playing with a lot this week is making meditation less personal making it less about you does anyone here meditate who's watching this do you meditate um, and when you do what are you doing it for yourself or you know so that you feel peaceful or so that you I feel, le I feel less stressed or for you so that you get some rest or are you doing it for everyone are you doing it for everyone well 
If you want to immediately improve your experience of meditation and make it so much more exciting for you, then I would suggest next time you sit down to meditate that you do it for everybody. You do it for humanity. Um, if you're doing it for yourself, you're going to be doing it uh, so that you feel better. And it's going to, it's going to be a lot of focus on, on how you're feeling and, and what's happening in your mind. And it's going to be very personal, the thoughts that pass on through. Um, but if you sit down to meditate with the intention of doing it for everyone, and you recognize that you're not meditating just for yourself, but you're meditating for the whole of humanity, then the thoughts that come through your awareness aren't necessarily personal. Because if you have a thought about whether you're good enough or whatever, then guess what? You're, not just, you're healing that not just for yourself, but you're healing it for humanity. You're doing great service by seeing that thought and just letting it go and surrendering it back to source. Maybe you're meditating and you have, have a, 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 a thought about, oh, how painful your shoulder is or whatever. Well, if you let, see that thought and just let it go and surrender it back to source, guess what's going to happen? You're actually helping do that for all of humanity so that the next person that has that suffering thought about the physical body is more easily able to let it go. Does that make sense, guys? So whenever thoughts crop up during your meditation, if you're doing it for every all of humanity, then it's much more easy to let it go because you're actually letting it go f on behalf of and for everyone uh, else so it makes it easier for them to let go of in the future too. How beautiful is that? It's a lot less personal and it brings your meditation much more alive because, well, like I say, you're not just doing it for yourself, but you're actually doing it so that uh, for, for the benefit of humanity. And I think that is a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful intention to play with. Same thing with emotions. If you're doing meditation... Uh, for all of humanity, whatever you're feeling, you just let it be present within you and just let it move on when it wants to. Guess what? You're doing that for not just yourself, but for all of humanity so that other people can learn how to more easily do the same. We really are connected uh, at a deep, deep level. Separation is only a surface level uh, impression. It's a, it, it, some say it's an illusion. Um, but at, at our heart, humanity is ultimately one. And that's really what Ascension's about uh, the shades of bright path. You know, as a monk, that's what I stand for. That, you know, I'm I'm all about teaching teaching the teaching of the one. That there is only one thing here, and it's a beautiful uh, experience when you actually experience that for yourself. Uh, when separation falls away, away, so does fear, and you get to experience a huge amount of love, uh, peace, and and freedom. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So there you go. I just wanted to do a quick Facebook Live uh, from uh, the land of Patmos. I wanted to ask uh, you about your purpose and if you ever felt that you were here for an important one. Uh, maybe as a child you felt like, you know, I'm here for, to do something important in my life. And, and sometimes we can start to uh, let that uh, a purpose slip, slip aside as we get busy with life. And I'd really invite you, if you do feel you're here for an important purpose, then perhaps one of them if, is, is to wake up is to wake up and know who you really are and to experience reality in all its glory as opposed to just think your way through life one step removed from life itself thinking about life instead of being uh, one with life so there you go thank you so much for uh, joining me for this little facebook live hope you've enjoyed it um i plan to do a few more of these uh if i have time and uh, inspiration uh rises up i'm going to do a few more of these uh, during my time here in Patmos with my spiritual teacher. Um, I'm going to get one of my monk friends uh, to uh, co-host the Calm Clan workshop uh, with me this weekend. Uh, the third weekend of every month, I always run an online two-hour workshop uh, inside my calmclan.com uh, website. If you enjoy this and if you enjoy learning uh, with me and from me and through me, um, then you might want to check out calmclan.com calmclan.com and the first month is free so you can join us uh, for the whole next 30 days uh, at no cost and suss out if you want to find out more but I'm going to have a really cool workshop with my one of my monk friends uh, you're going to join me and we're going to share uh, all about uh, peace and meditation and living consciously and conscious relationships and loads, loads of different topics we're going to cover in the time we have this weekend uh, because I think a lot of people you know, are fascinated by the values that I've taken and, and how I tend to aim to live my life and, and it's cool to hear from me but it's also cool to hear from other people doing it too that aren't me and to hear different perspectives so head, head over to the, the calm clan, sorry, calmclan.com uh, 
join for your first month and uh, we can join us live for the live broadcast this weekend. It happens inside the Calm Clan, so you need to be a member in order to access the, the link for the, the live broadcast and everything else you get, uh, which I'm not going to list now, but um, you get that soon. And lastly, um, watch the space because I'm going to be announcing an Ascension retreat uh, in the UK in the next few days. So a few days to learn to ascend and to experience Ascension at a deeper level. Um, I'm going to be announcing that in the next few days, so um, watch the space for that too. So there you go. I'm just going to uh, leave you uh, with a beautiful view of Patmos. Let me see if I can go around. Can we walk along? How about that, eh? Have a moment of calm wherever you happen to be in the world. You know, I just feel so blessed to be alive. And uh, honestly, guys, when you get out of the way and you stop trying to control your life, life has a way of taking you to amazing places, meeting amazing people, and just loving every moment. So thank you so much, guys, for listening. And I hope to see you at another Facebook Live sometime soon. Bye for now.